In this part of the lesson, I'm going to quickly introduce some ways to parve a surface with gems. Okay, so let's create a new file. Generic parve surface. Okay, now in the previous lessons, we have learned about our gems between two curves, uniform and scaled gem arrays. Okay, so these allow us to place a row of gems. Okay, but we also have commands that allow us to parve surfaces, so more than one row at a time. So let's first of all create a shape to parve. I'm going to insert a sketch of my top datum. Okay, I'm just going to place some of these ready sketches. We will be extruding these to create some more unique surfaces to parve. Okay, and one more. Maybe that's a bit big. Let's say this one here. Okay, we'll exit. Now we will extrude this sketch. Pick the sketch. One sided. Just do a two millimeter extrusion, and there we have some surfaces to parve. Okay, so in the parve tab, the first one we will look at is our fill surface command. Okay, if we left click on this command, it brings up our options panel. We then pick a surface, or rather, we pick the surface by defining a stone on that surface. Okay, we left click to place it and then we are prompted to pick the reference. When we start dragging this out we will get a preview of our surface parve. Okay, we can drag this out and see what we like the look of. Left click to place the reference and then we can modify the fields in this command. Okay, So let's increase the number of stones first of all, just to a high number. Okay, we can change the size of our stones. like so, the distance between them, the overlap of our stones if there is one, the border overlap, okay so this will change the overlap allowance of our stones with borders. If we change our step size again, let's set it to be one. If we decrease this it's going to get rid of some of our overlap stones. The maximum border overlap we can have is thirty percent. Yeah, we won't often want to have an overlap at all. Okay, we can fill with small stones. Okay, this will fill up our spare space with smaller stones than our size. Okay, and we can define the minimum size that we want our fill stones to be. Okay, we can give an elevation to our stones. We can mirror them across some datums. Okay, we can always redefine our reference if we change the size of our stones and we want to have a different result. Okay, the springs box is going to define our stone placement using springs, a slightly different method. Okay, we'll confirm the operation. Okay, and there is our parve surface by using the fill surface command. Okay, next up we'll take a look at our jelly parve. Okay, so by left clicking on this. We have our material panel. Here we pick our surface. By left clicking the surface, we already get a preview of the jelly parve. Okay, we can define some borders. We can add points that we want to have specific gemstones at. We can remove specific gemstone points. We can freeze our gemstones. Okay, and all of these will have an effect 
and how our jelly parve comes in. You can see that the jelly parve is slightly more jumbled, but its aim is to fill up all of the vacant space with gemstones. Yeah, some of these commands are similar to the pre previous command. We can remove points simply by left clicking. It's going to remove that gemstone from that point. We can add points and the jelly parve will try to work around the points that we add in points that we want specific stones to be at. Okay, so the sour jelly parve. And when you're using it, we'd want to play around with these fields a bit to get the best result. It really depends on the surface. Okay, and the final command I want to show you for parveing a surface is our UV pattern parve. Again, we can pick gemstones. In this case, we can pick different shaped stones as well as the gemstone type. We then select a point. Again, we'll have a UV pattern of these gemstones. Okay, we can select a row pattern or our offset pattern method. Here we have a few more commands. We can define the distance between our U and our V lines. We can define where our starting U line begins, where it ends, and the same with the V. And again, we can add elevation and rotation to our stones. Confirm the operation. And there we have a UV parve on that surface of our oval diamonds. Okay, so we'd probably want to erase our overlapping stones. But we get quite a nice result there and it's very quick and easy. Okay, so these are th three parveying methods for filling up surfaces with stones. Okay, but we will also need a way to set our parveyed stones. Okay, we've seen our uniform scaled prong settings that we can also use on our parveyed surfaces. Okay, so they don't have to be an array, one line of stones to use these and still pick them like so. However, this is going to throw in sometimes maybe more prongs than we want. Okay, so we have another tool, our parve prongs command. Okay, so this tool is specifically for throwing in prongs on a parve such as these. The stones are the feature. Okay, you can see a preview there. We're already getting some nice prongs thrown in. We then have the same sort of options as in our other prong commands. We can change the prong depth and height. And then here we have a three stone combination, two stone combination. Okay, two stone being the prongs between two stones. Three stone being the prongs between three stones, like here. Okay, so we have separate controls over these two prongs. Okay, we can change the overlap, which will bring down the prong size. Okay, many of these fields are the same as with our op other options, so you should understand them. Confirm the operation. We have the tweak tool thrown up. We want to make modifications. And there is our parveyed surface with the prongs. Okay, so I'm showing you this quickly, but if you take a bit of time with these tools, you can get very nice results.